Hola amigos y amigas de Rock FM, de Rock FM Motel. Tenemos en la habitación VIP, en la habitación reservada para las grandes estrellas de la música, del rock and roll, la gente que ha hecho historia dentro de la sociedad hoy engalanada de oro para recibir a uno de los mejores cantantes de la historia, a uno de los mejores compositores y a uno de los mejores artistas. Es para nosotros un lujo, un placer tenerte en nuestra casa. Ian Gillan, welcome to Rock FM. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. <laughs> It's a pleasure for us. Thank you. Eh, sabemos eh, de tu amistad con el director Friedman Rille. Eh, viene de hace un par de, de décadas, por lo menos, y, y yo quería saber, Ian, de dónde viene tu vínculo con la música clásica. Um, we don't call it classical music. We call it orchestral music because um, even rock has classic. Yeah. Names. Classic is some one thing. Orchestral, rock, the combination. But you know, it's this guy has long hair and he is he loves rock music. And he played me I, I he called me in my room and said, uh, I want to play you something. Who are you? I'm I'm Friedman really from the um, Prague Philharmonic. Okay. So we had coffee, breakfast, <laughs> and I'm listening to this cassette, Highway Star. And I can hear, the one thing I'm hearing was the energy that came from him. It's very difficult to get that kind of energy into an orchestra. Uh, they're normally very steady. Uh, even with the powerful parts, it's very steady because it's all under control. Everything's written down and everything else. But he managed somehow to make the orchestra exciting. And I was very impressed with this. Um, I've worked with lots of orchestras. And believe me, they're not all exciting. <risa> okay. Cuatro fechas en España. Eh, empiezas este mismo 18 de noviembre, Vino, eh, Vigo, perdón, Vitoria, Granada, y terminas esta gira en Madrid con otros cantantes, una gira junto a la Orquesta Sinfónica de Praga. Yo recuerdo, a principios de este siglo, en el año 2000, cuando viniste Deep Purple, Ronnie James Dio y The Philharmonic Orchestra of Romania, here in, in Madrid, en el Palacio de los Deportes. Eh, ¿Recuerdas eh, aquella gira? Eh, ¿Tu parte ahora tiene alguna similitud con aquello que vivimos? Yes, I think it's similar, it, except it's not. It, it's not. Um, it, it, it's got different musicians, obviously. So every show in every element is different. It, there's an orchestra and there's a band. So in that way, it's the same. And I'm singing uh, seven Deep Purple songs, so that's the same. Uh, the human chemistry will be different, the audience is different, the personnel is different, but it's the same kind of thing, yes. <laughs> Con 77 años, ¿qué puntuación le darías ahora mismo a tu voz? ¿Tienes algún truco? Any well, tricks? I think uh, that's, it's always a difficult thing. I've known lots of singers who've had problems with their voices as they get older. And, but they're normally singers that don't do lots of touring. They're singers that work in a recording studio and make albums and a few concerts here and there. Because there's no doubt about it, your vocal cords, like your muscles, like your bones and tendons yeah. and your brain, will, unless you use it a lot, will get older and it will show signs of age. So we are... Like a sports. Like sports. Sport. <laughs> and um, there are some things I can't do anymore. But we've been on the road now since April. I don't get home until... I haven't been home yet in, in England until 21st of December. So it's a pretty... Intense. You got to keep it active. Um, also, <clears throat> you learn along the way that um, some things can damage your voice. Um, now, I don't party every night now. Um, maybe just twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the other thing is that um, it's a technical thing, but when you're younger and in it more inexperienced you tend to sing anything in any key and normally the key was determined by the guitar player because that's the best key for the guitar player to play and if you change by a semitone down oh, i don't like it because my fingers have to go yeah. in a different way and i don't <laughs> know how to do it so oh baby so um you know we have to we had to do it in the key of the guitar player normally and sometimes that's the wrong key And so if you're straining, you can hit the notes okay, but not every night. And after a while, it becomes difficult. 
it's not just rock singers. Pavarotti had the same problem. Every opera singer has the same problem. Every professional singer has the same problem. You have to sing in the right key for your for your um, for your for your body, yeah. and uh, if you do that, you can keep singing uh, for a long time. So now um, it's 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 good. Nearly everything is in the original key that I do with Deep Purple, and um, it's. It, because we do so much, it's in good shape, so we, we keep fit. If I take three months off, I have to start all over again. Cool. <laughs> el último disco de Deep Purple, Turn It to Crime, eh, va a ser presentado en el próximo mes de junio en nuestro país, en España. Además, en este show que haces a partir de eh, este mes de noviembre con la Filarmónica de, de Praga, hay otros cantantes que cantan canciones de Pink Floyd, de Metallica, de ACDC. Eh, ¿Te animas eh, ahora en este show con la Filarmónica de Praga a hacer algún cover, a hacer alguna versión como has hecho con Deep Purple en el último disco? <risa> No, no. The covers we did on Turning to Crime, <coughs> our choice. <laughs> I wouldn't like to sing. Um, you know the 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 songs that we chose on Turning to Crime. You could call them kind of, in the true sense of the word, classics because they've been around for a long time and they have survived and they're they're good songs and so lot, many people have performed them. So it's just a question of interpretation. When you're dealing with ACDC and Pink Floyd and um, Metallica. Black Sabbath and uh, Pink and uh, they, they, these guys are identified by the individuals in the band, by the singers, you can hear it. And if somebody, you know, if I sing Ronnie Dio songs, it, it doesn't sound right. <laughs> it just doesn't sound right, you know. I was with Black Sabbath for a year and I sang Ozzy Osbourne songs as well as the songs from Born Again. And I never felt right doing that. You know, I, it was great. I could sing them okay, but I didn't sound like Ozzy. It's, it's something not quite right, you know. So I think uh, I'm very happy to let the other boys and girls on, the, on this show sing the ACDC and the Black Sabbath and the Pink Floyd stuff. And I'll sing the Deep Purple stuff. Now, ahora que has tocado el tema de Born Again, ese disco con Black Sabbath, ¿es verdad que tiraste y destrozaste las primeras copias que te llegaron de Born Again? Um, I didn't break it. I threw it out the window of my car. <laughs> On the M4. Uh, I was, look, I was disappointed. <coughs> I didn't have the mentality of all the guys in Black Sabbath. I loved it. I had a fantastic year. It was, it was insane. But um, when we finished the mixes, I still have a cassette at my home of the monitor mixes of Born Again. And it sounds fantastic, just on a cassette. But when I, and that's the last thing I heard in the recording studio. When I heard the album, I went, what is this? It's, it's, it, the, the bass rumble was, a bit too much for me. And in America, there's a famous line in a famous movie called This Is Spinal Tap that has two or three references to Black Sabbath in it. And I don't know where these men have come from, <laughs> but one of them was, this album is unplayable on American radio <clears throat> because of the bass end. And so it was unplayable on the radio. I was disappointed in the final production mix. I don't know what happened between the studio and the uh, factory, but something happened. And um, so that was a disappointment. Having said that, I love some of the songs on there and uh, Trashed is one of my favorite rock and roll songs of all time. And even more so because it's a completely true story. <laughs> Ok, le queda mucha mecha, le queda mucha vida a Parpel todavía componiendo canciones nuevas y saliendo de gira. En este 2023 hacéis una gira. 100%. If you asked me that question uh, last year, I'd have said, mm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But now, with uh, our new banjo player, um, Simon, who is amazing, there's been a renaissance in the band. We've just finished a, a fantastic tour. The energy has been unbelievable and uh, you know sometimes you know this in in your own heart 
when you're in a band uh, with your your fellow bandmates, you know this, um, how it's going. And it can be rewarding in its own way, but it doesn't necessarily transmit to the, the public. On this tour, the reaction has been cool. incredible, absolutely incredible. So yes, there's a, another two, three years at least. Who knows? Fantastic Maybe news <risa> por más. Eh, has tenido muchas experiencias en nuestro país, en España. Eh, has venido con Black Sabbath, has venido con Purple, has venido como Ian Gillen en solitario. ¿Cuál es tu mejor recuerdo de tocar en nuestro país? My first memory in Spain, I played in Vigo. It was in a, it was in a small venue. I was with my own band, and two days before I left home, I broke my ribs playing ah, cricket. Cool. <risa> cricket violent sport and uh, it was very hard to breathe because my lungs would hurt and my ribs would hurt every time I my, every time they moved <coughs> also But we were in breathe. a van with no suspension and wooden seats and it was on the country roads it was I arrived in Vigo I was white and in terrible pain went to the venue I can't do this but I must so I got to hold the rib somehow. So I got a roll of gaffer tape and put the gaffer tape around me 10 times from here to here to stop my ribs expanding too much. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, you know, gaffer tape, when you stick it to skin, it's very strong. <laughs> But when you sweat, when you perspire, it's not sticky anymore. And after three songs, I had a black mini skirt. It was... <laughs> That's my favorite memory from oh, Spain. No, no, also, with Black Sabbath playing in the Bull Ring in Barcelona, we had uh, a very... V it, it, they all ended up in the police station the night before. We went to a club, and some of us ended up fighting on the streets, and some of them ended up in the police station. And it was... Uh, these sort of things didn't happen with Deep Purple. <laughs> we drank quietly in Deep Purple. <laughs> Sabbath was crazy. <laughs> But... Um, It was good fun, yeah. We've, we've had lots of, lots of amazing times here. Cool, cool. ¿Volverás a cantar Child in Time alguna vez encima del escenario? Si quieres puedes hacerlo hoy, ¿eh? solo al principio. No, no. It's not possible. Um, I could drop the key down, but it wouldn't sound the same. Um, I always make the analogy... <coughs> When I was young, I used to be an athlete, and I used to do the pole vault. That was my sport. And when I was 25, I couldn't do the pole vault anymore. 26, <laughs> no, forget it. I can't do it. And um, so I always thought of Child in Time not as a song, but more like an Olympic event. It was, it was so challenging. Uh, but yet, when I was young, it was effortless. So um, we got to the point when I got to about 38 years old and... It just didn't sound right. So I thought, better not to do it badly, better not to do it. So um, it's been the same. And uh, I never... Good decision. Yeah. I never looked... Well, when I was 38, when I made that decision, I thought, my God, I, I'm nearly halfway through my life now. And uh, it made me think about the future. Do I want to be a singer for the rest of my life? Well, of course. I must. I've been singing since I was five years old in the church choir, you know, or since I was eight. And um, my whole family was musical, singers, musicians. And so um, what do I do then? I, I don't want to just be known for this scream, yeah. as it was called. And so um, I thought, I don't want to be screaming when I'm 80 years old or 70 <laughs> years old. It's undignified. <laughs> But here I am at 77 and I'm still screaming, so uh, up to a point. Um, but the, the uh, control element and the elevation of that note is, is beyond me, to be honest. Yeah. But you can do it 10 seconds, just 10 seconds today now, here, live. You want to come outside? <laughs> I, can t <laughs> I can still no throw No screaming, I can no, still just, throw a punch. just the start. <laughs> Ok, <risa> eh, habéis hecho guiños eh, Blackmore y Duel en los últimos años, habéis hecho, ha hecho guiños Richie eh, a Deep Purple, 
¿Es posible una reconciliación o es posible una actuación conjunta? No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> you understand me. I understand that one. Look, um, Deep Purple is a family that's been together before I joined in 68. It was um, Richie Blackmore, John Lord, Ian Pace, Nick Simper and Rod Evans. Roger Glover and I joined in 69. And in the intervening periods, there's been David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes and a couple of other guys. In 70, Roger Glover and you. Yeah, with this, uh, exactly. Uh, and then when we grew up, when we settled down and the human chemistry was okay, we were getting on fire. We had the reunion with Perfect Strangers, but everything was slightly different. Richie was different, you know. Um, I think we all were. I, Richie used to be my roommate in Deep Purple. We used to <laughs> party together. And I have a lot of... I, I don't like to think of the negatives. I just have lots of fantastic memories of Richie as a great guitar player, uh, the, a wicked sense of humor, and I mean wicked, and um, a, a professional, you know, a real good guy uh, in that sense. But something changed on Richie uh, when we got back together. And we'd all changed, and the human chemistry wasn't quite the same. So it became difficult. And in the end, there was this antagonism. I got fired from the band because I wanted to do more touring and Richie wanted to do less touring. And um, we had a meeting one day and I said, well, you know, why don't we go to <laughs> South America? Why don't we go to Russia? Why don't we go to there, all over the world? You know, we're, we're a live band. And the next day, Richie went to the management and said, well, it's him or me. So they chose him <laughs> and that was fine. And then they made a record with, um, Um, another singer, I can't remember his name, um, and uh, the record label said, you know, either you get Ian back in the band or we're tearing up the contract. So I went back in Deep Purple and Richie went crazy. He didn't like it. So eventually he walked out. So in normal terms, in a family or something like that, because we are a family, you'd think it was like a divorce something like that. He walked out, he's gone. But he wanted to keep control of the band after, after having walked out. And um, he's been a pain in the ass ever since. <laughs> But we are getting on much better these days. And uh, he's, <laughs> I think he, he's, um, he, he, his manager's got a lot to do with it, the problem that exists. So um, it's, it's one of those things that you cope with. And um, I think the idea of the call for a grand reunion or something like that, it would be utterly disrespectful to the living, breathing Deep Purple. It would be awful. The atmosphere would be terrible. It would be artificial. It would be only for money, nothing else. Because there's no love there. There's no affinity. There's no... Um, What would we play the old? 25% of the essence of Deep Purple is improvisation. And we've got a musician now that is absolutely unbelievable. And um, I don't know how much Richie's been keeping practicing or anything like that. So I could go on for a long time, but the simple answer is no. We, we, it's the ex-wife we do not want, want to get back together again. <laughs> Many times it's the same question, but we are, yeah, sure. we are, we are fans. And I understand it. I understand it because we're, this is a subjective point of view of the whole band. It's not the view of the promoter or the record company yeah. or, the, or certain fans, not all fans, but some fans, yes. Some Richie Blackmore fans, yes, of course. ¿Qué opinas de los nuevos cantantes que son producto de máquinas como y programas como el Autotune? y en directo eh, se basa en el, en el playback. Well, personally, I think that's cheating. I don't like it. Um, what are you going to do? I first noticed this with, I'm not naming any names, but I know a lot of people who do it. And I first noticed this 20 years ago with a big American band came over to play with us in, in England and um, I thought, I heard the sound check, and I thought, Jesus, they sound good, they sound fantastic. And our monitor engineer went, look, and in those days before radio connections and everything else, 
You see that caravan there <laughs> from the stage? Cables along the ground going through this uh, keep out sign and everything else. Uh, monitors in there and a mixing desk and tapes and coordination and playbacks and in-ear monitors for... Um, they were miming, basically. Well, I won't say they're miming, they're singing along, but they, the voice wasn't being used in the microphone. But their lip sync was so clever that they um, didn't get noticed. And I've seen, I know lots of people, people I've met in the last three months that have absolutely shocked me, saying, um, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're relying on a, something else now. Used to be drugs, now it's tape. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, por último, para terminar, queríamos saber quién es el artista que más has admirado en tu vida, quién es tu referente de la voz, por ejemplo. Holy moly, I've got a list of heroes, heroes. I was, I was talking in the car today about a famous flamenco guitarist called Tomatito, who is my hero. Absolutely adore the, the music and the passion and the articulation from this guy. Uh, Ronnie, you mentioned earlier, I was a great friend of mine, so maybe I'm biased in that sense. Uh, Robert Plant, I've been a great fan of Robert Plant since day one. I saw his first show at the Marquee when he did Pictures at Eleven, his first solo album. Um, and I've followed his career ever since. Uh, uh, Dusty Springfield was one of my favorite singers of all time. It was my first professional tour was with her. Stevie Wonder is a phenomenal singer and songwriter and artist in general. Elvis, of course, and Little Richard were huge, but Buddy Holly also was very important to me for the balance between that and the gentler side, you know, the balance, the texture. Uh, I could go on. Um, <coughs> Pavarotti, <coughs> Chopin. Um, I love choral music. I was a, a boy soprano in the church choir, so I love church music. Um, and. Uh, I could go up. Music, music, music. Muddy Waters, Howling Wolf, you name it. <laughs> ¿El rock and roll ha muerto? No, no. Uh, the, inter the understanding of it is dead. I think, I think to a certain extent, because the bi what used to be called the music business is now called the music industry. And a lot of humanity has gone out of it. It's a, like everything in life today. A lot, is, a lot of it is um, an algorithm or... Um, uh, a quick press of a button and this sort of thing. I think rock and rock, I call it, still call it rock and roll, but rock music is the generic term. So I, I see kids all the time learning to play guitars, wanting to be in bands. It's like following football. They want to be their football heroes. They copy this and that and the other, but they have no opportunity now because they don't understand what they have to do is practice, practice, practice and work with other musicians, not just rock musicians, because that's how it will survive. You know, if you have pure, undiluted blood or no immigration in a culture, it will die through its own success because it, 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 it can't get stronger. If you're a mongrel nation, you have immigration and you have development and change, things will survive. Our music in Deep Purple came from Chopin, Beethoven, Jimmy Smith, the, the Hammond organ jazz player, from Buddy Rich, big band swing, from Richie Blackmore, studio session playing rock and roll of all kinds, from Roger Glover, Bob Dylan, folk music and everything else, and from my influence, which was rock and roll, uh, church music and uh, soul and blues. And uh, all of those things together made our rock music. And that's the definition of any group of people, whether it's a football team or a family or a, a small company. It's the human chemistry that makes it work. And there's always with young people that sense of rebellion and that attitude. And I've never seen or heard of a better um, vehicle or better medium for expressing that than rock music in, or in art form. It's fantastic. It gives you an expression for words, for lyrics, for melody, for rhythm, for clothes and fashion and all of those things. Um, but sometimes it's limited and strangled by, um, you know, rock and roll became rock music, then it became hard rock, then it became progressive rock, then it became classic rock, then it became grunge and he death metal and, all, and heavy metal and, and all of these <laughs> things. And you had to wear the clothes and have the hair and have the attitude and play the riff. And uh, so that was in itself a kind of strangulation. In America, we were killed for 10 years by the, they called us classic rock. <laughs> that's, that's a tombstone around your neck. What does that mean? It means they'll only play smoke on the water. 
or highway star. Yeah. That's it in America. It's changing a little bit now because of the new younger stations and uh, the in semi-independent under the umbrella of Sirius and things like that. But um, it's all about how you react with society. And I think the kids need hope and also education that they don't just copy the rock band, copy other musicians and be inspired by poets and painters and whatever and let your personality develop in your formative years. <laughs> Mr. Gillan, thank you for coming. Thank you to be in your home. This Thank is Rock FM. Much.